Good morning, my dear. Garth, don't you ever sleep? Sleeping alone is worse than no sleep at all, so until you decide to share my bed with me, I'll have to content myself with the odd nap here and there. Would you please stop this? Now, I have told you over and over, I love Robert. I've never been happier in my life. And I demand that you respect my feelings. If you're so damned happy, my darling, why aren't you wrapped in your husband's arms, making love like we did after we stole that night together? If you value your position as my father's assistant, I suggest that you concentrate on business and that you forget we ever kissed, much less made love. You've forgotten the passion we shared. There's very little worth remembering. Morning. Why do I get the feeling that I'm interrupting an argument? Did you sleep well? Well, my body sure did. I thought I'd never recover from that local anesthetic you gave me last night. Have you observed the real Mr. Buchanan? Yeah. Yeah, I took a peek at him before I went to bed. He's just roaming around in there trying to figure out why he was drugged and uh, why he was taken out of the room. But he seems to be OK, physically. <clears throat> Take it easy, will you? Have you been experiencing a good deal of pain? No, no, just when you go poking around at it like that. And then when I walk... You've been walking. I told you to stay in bed. I wanted to test my leg. It's gonna be a while before I get to roll in the hay with Tina, though, again, huh? <laughs> she saw this bandage. Talk about that. Right. Well, I think you'd better concentrate on answering Clint's questions about the oil deal. Well, that's taken care of. I mean, we're home free as far as that goes. Not quite. Clint was at Ace's last night on a rampage about the sale of the offshore oil well. And he managed to upset Asa. Now, look, I think you should find a way to put out that fire before it gets out of control. Damn it. Listen, that explosion at the banner was supposed to get that guy off my back. What's your estimate before we can get the presses rolling again, Bill? There's a lot of damage, Mr. B. It's a miracle no one was hurt real bad or killed. Yeah, I know. I thank the good Lord for that every night. But I still got a few hundred people out of work. And a bunch of unhappy subscribers, so the sooner we get rebuilt, the better. It'll take at least a week to clean up the mess. <sighs> then put on a double crew. You got any idea what caused the explosion? No. All possibility of mechanical failure has been ruled out. Big mystery to all of us. Mm. Oh. Court, get up. Oh, please, wait till your alarm clock goes. Come on, huh? get up. Get up. Mm. Whoa, boy, are you grumpy in the morning, huh? Look, I have a kink in my neck, a cramp in my leg, and on top of that, my arm has fallen asleep. I think I have every right to be a little grumpy. <laughs> around here. Let me massage your neck. And then I'm gonna work on the arm and then the leg and whatever else got kinks in it, okay? Well, maybe I can work these kinks out when we walk to the gas station. <laughs> that is, if you didn't con me about Ooh. running out of gas last night. Are you kidding me? You're about as naive as you are beautiful. I can't believe you fell for the oldest trick in the book. <laughs> I can't believe it, oh. you fat! That's hey. terrible! Hey. Hey. Here's what to do when you don't find See you later. Wait, what time is it? It's 9 o'clock. Listen, go back to sleep, okay? Well, don't you want some breakfast? I had coffee, I had the last donut, but I saved you a sweet roll. Honey, I'm really late. I have to go. Oh, okay. well, wait, isn't this your day off? Yeah, but I have to meet with Chino to go over the Angel Burger ad campaign. Oh, uh, you're not still on that stupid kick, are you? Excuse me? It's not stupid. It's going to make us millionaires. I don't want to be a millionaire. I just want to be happy. Something tells me we could probably be happy being millionaires. Come on, have a little faith in me. This is the hottest thing since sliced bread. It's going to be so big, there's going to be a franchise in every town in the country. Bigger than Little League Baseball. I mean, I'd like you to stay with me on this dream, okay? It's a, go it's a winner. There's no way you can lose. Well, with people like Gino involved, who knows? What's wrong with Gino? The guy's a goofball. All right, so maybe he's a little different, but he's still the hottest photographer in advertising. Every single account he works on takes off. And if you would consent to be our poster girl, 
We'd be guaranteed to go right to the top. I told you, no way. Mm -mm. Would you please just think about it? All I want to do is make you happy, so if that doesn't make you happy, okay. Wait, I'm sorry that I'm putting a damper on your enthusiasm. Of course I want your dream to come true, and of, of course I want it to be a success. I know that. The only problem is I can't seem to make you as happy as all of your oh, big friends on, are making Oh, come on, that is you. not true at all. Yes, it is. Wait, I want to be a good wife to you. Marilyn, you're the best wife I could possibly imagine. I, I'm never going to trade you in for anybody. Got me? Well, if I can't make love to you soon, you might consider trading me in for someone who can. Don't even talk like that. I don't believe there's a rule in the marriage handbook that says a couple has to make love every night. I love you. You're stuck with me, kiddo. Oh, lucky me. <laughs> What's how me be home? I don't know. It depends on how the audition goes. What audition? The audition for the poster girl for the Angel Burgers. You know Randy Stone, the, the guy from the ad agency? Well, he said he's lined up about a hundred beautiful women for me and Gino to check out. So I'll call you when we get a break, okay? Bye-bye. A hundred beautiful women? Garth was just lecturing me on my extravagant ways. Sweetheart, I was just about to ask Jarvis to bring us up a nice breakfast tray to our bedroom. Well, I think there's enough here to feed an army besides. All I want is tea. Would you care for some? Yes, thank you. Now, what do you think of this for our bedroom? The drapes we have now are so dreary. Oh, that's a lovely pattern. Once the decorating's refinished, I thought perhaps we could have a grand gala, invite all of Lampview Society to see our new home and celebrate our marriage. What a smashing idea, especially since your hasty ceremony precluded a large wedding reception. One thing about Americans, Garth, once they set their mind to do something, they take action immediately. Yes, ma'am. America equals action. So, since you couldn't come to our wedding, I hope you'll be here for the gala. Well, the redecorating won't be finished for quite a while. I imagine by the time we're through, Garth will be back at his desk in London. Well, that depends on how long Lord Henry plans to stay here. He seems quite taken with the colonies this little town in particular, so I expect my duties will keep me around indefinitely. Did Clint convince Asa that I made a bad deal? Well, as I recall, Asa seemed to believe that you would have a perfectly good explanation for your actions. Now, you can use this time of recuperation to invent a story to satisfy Asa, then resolve the problem when you return from your little trip. Now, this little trip is over, Doctor. You must stay in bed at least for another day or so. Then walk occasionally the next day. Otherwise, you might tear the incision. Listen. At the least, you will inflame the surrounding tissue. I'll come back later and you can check it out, all right? I thought you were a reasonable man. Look, the reason I joined this million dollar crap shoot with you and with Elizabeth and Henry was a, my hatred for the Buchanans, especially Cord. Mm. Not to mention having control of the Lord Fortune once it passes to Tina's hands. That's just an added benefit. But right now, if I don't make peace with Clint, his suspicions about me are going to blow us right out of the water. We're going to end up with zero. I can't risk that, Bruner. In ten seconds, Diane Miller is going to experience... How are you doing? You're having lunch with Tom. Uh, no, Mary Lynn, but I'm a little early. Uh, Wanda, uh, people are already asking for angel burgers. Ah, good news, travels fast. Yeah, Wade probably spent the night in the middle of the town promoting this ridiculous idea. It is not a ridiculous idea. It is a prince of an idea. Would you tell him, Renee? Well, they're delicious. Why not herald them through the land and let the rest of America enjoy them? Well, there's something to be said for mom and pop stores, too, you know. Small enterprises run by close friends and family. Not every business has to go multinational. We are not talking multinational. We are talking national for this year. <laughs> oh, okay, Wanda, you can be a big shot tycoon. I have to fill an order. Excuse me. Thank you. Thank you. 
Byron, eh? Oh. Hi, Wanda. Have you seen Gino? Is he here yet? If, if he was here, you would see him, believe me. Step right up, folks, and shake hands with the future Landview Businessman of the Year, maybe even the decade. <laughs> oh, come on, Charlie. Hey, don't turn modest on me now, pal. We're counting on your confidence and enthusiasm to push this idea through. Ah, uh, your order's getting cold, Charlie, and Wade, table four needs clearing. I'm dancing as fast as I can, Gil. <laughs> Wanda, isn't it my day off? Yes, I remember that, but would you be so kind as to show me to a table? Would sure. You? Right this way, ma'am. You. you having uh, lunch with Tom? Uh, no, uh, Mary Lynn. She asked me to help her with some special school project she's got. Great. Something wrong? Did she tell you what that special school project's about? No. She's doing a psychological report on prostitution. Now, I'm not supposed to know this, but I snuck a peek at her notes the other night. Well, that's strange. Uh, why would she keep a thing like that secret from you? Well, probably because she thinks I'm going to hassle her again about going to get help. But I thought that she'd taken care of all of her concerns about Lee when you came back from the honeymoon. Well, so did I. And everything was going just fine between us. And the other night... Honey, do you want to talk about this before Mary Lynn arrives? Lord, my feet are absolutely killing me. Well, I wouldn't lean against uh, that if I were you. Now my feet and my seat are killing me. <laughs> What's the matter? You burn yourself? No, I did not burn myself. My reflexes are still working, even if the rest of my body isn't. You know, I would have thought a smart girl like you would know better than lean up against a hot car like that. You know, if I had some of that cream, I'd rub it on it for <laughs> Look, you. I don't know. I think the it. sun fried my brain or something <laughs> when we were walking to the gas station. Or when we were walking back from the gas station. I don't know. Anyway, these shoes were not meant for walking on dusty roads. Oh, poor baby. You do me a favor? You pop the gas cap for me? It's right there on the door. at the gas station was laughing. Oh, are you kidding me? I bet he was staring at you because you're just about the prettiest woman he's ever seen. I think he's probably been living in the wilderness too long. Mm. Yeah, you know, I told you you could have waited on the shade of that tree over there instead of walking down the gas station with Thank you. Thank you. You heard those wild dogs last night. Oh, well, I thought you had great experience with wild animals after fending me off for so long. You were a perfect gentleman last night. That's just because this little foreign car had that stick shift in the way. I tell you, next time I'm going to get stranded with you, I'm going to get one of them luxury vans with, like, the hot tub in it. That way I can uh, exercise some of my fine moves. <laughs> I don't think that should be so much of a problem. Hmm. What is this I hear? Is this uh, encouragement, maybe? Just stating facts. Oh. You know, uh, you really do look pretty great this morning. You know that? Forest rangers, maybe. I think they're clearing some wood out of there. That's a forest preserve right back there. You, you okay? Yes, I'm fine. I guess I'm not very much of a nature girl. Oh, I think you'll be just fine. Whoa! Hey, look at this time. Uh, look, we gotta get going. I gotta get up to that cabin and... Cord! Oh, boy. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, what's the matter? You tell me. Why is it that every time we get started, you stop? It's nothing personal. Really, I, I, I just really have to get going. I gotta get back to town. We gotta get that lens, and I gotta get back to town. Got this meeting. It must be a very, very important meeting. Uh, yes, ma'am, it is a very, very important meeting. Sarah, I promise you, we're gonna get together. We're, we're gonna make it up to that cabin someday soon, I promise. Please, can we Fine. get going here? Fine. Oh, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Joanna, what a lovely frock. Why, thank you, Garth. I got it in Geneva on honeymoon. Well, Geneva's hardly the fashion capital of the world. I'd have thought you'd find better things to do with your time. <laughs> but I did. I just happened to see this in the shop window of the hotel, and I rang down and ordered it. Darling, are you sure you won't come to the decorators with me? I have to wait for that call from London about my club. Well, we could always ask the decorator to come over here. Well, Joanna, then he has to drag all of his books and swatches over here. It would be much easier for both of you if you just go to his office. Oh, I suppose you're right. I'll keep him company. Give me a chance to get to know him better. Well, you know, I, I could arrange for a later appointment today. No, you go on ahead. The sooner we get this place fixed up, the sooner we can have our big party. Yes. It'll be the gala of the century. Or the next century, if you don't get rolling. <laughs> All right, I'm off. 
Don't let Garth bore you to death. He loves the sound of his own voice. Have fun. Where's Lord Henry? I haven't seen him all morning. Oh, he was up bright and early on a business matter. Oh. When did Lord Henry decide to set up shop here in Landview? He's had offers to join in various ventures over the past few years. One or two looked quite interesting, so he decided to look into them personally. Hmm. Exactly how long have you worked for? Several years. Funny. I don't remember seeing you in London that often. I'm his European troubleshooter. I travel a great deal. Lord Henry must trust you a lot. I've never given him cause not to. And Joanna? What? She doesn't even try to hide her hostility towards you. Well, as Lord Henry says, Joanna and I have been friends for a long time. I take great joy in teasing her. Now, she pretends to dislike me, but actually she's very fond of me. I don't mind her barbs. It makes our friendship more interesting. Oh, one of the country's top horse breeders is coming around this afternoon to show some fillies to Henry. Why don't we walk down to the stables? I haven't inspected them yet. I've got to wait for a call. Gives new meaning to the phrase mobile society. Shall we? much longer, so we won't need the shelter. Now, remember to come back tonight so I can check your knee. This is just not healthy. Now, she's working really hard on the school project, but I don't understand it. And I've got a feeling it's just going to make things worse. Well, have you talked to her about counseling? She avoids it every single time I mention it. She thinks she can handle it by herself, but she can't. What about Larry Wallach? Would he be able to help? Yeah, I went to see him. He said if I can't get her to go see a psychiatrist, the next best thing is to get her involved in something that'll take her mind off her mother. Any good ideas? I've got a great idea. I wish she'd get involved in the Angel Burger ad campaign, but she doesn't want any part of it. Why not? She's perfect. She's so beautiful. I agree. But she won't tell me why. She just says I'm chasing a crazy dream. Listen, Renee, do you think you can convince her if this idea flops, it'd still be a lot of fun for her? Honey, I'll do my best. Hi, honey. Hi. How are you? I thought you were auditioning models this morning. We're going to do it here. Randy Stone, you remember guy, the guy from the ad agency? He's going to bring over his collection of beautiful women for me and Gino to check out. Uh. You want to stay and watch? Oh, no, I'm having lunch with Renee. So we can see each other afterwards, then? Mm -hmm. Good. Enjoy. Hey, Rob. Sorry. Court, I've been trying to call you. Where have you been? I was held up out in the country. I mean, that literally. Listen, um, is it all right to talk in here? Yeah, hold on. Everybody's out right now. But if anybody comes in, tell them that you're working on that article for the banner about stars. Good idea. So have you found out anything? No. I ran Bo's name by Joanne a couple of times, but she doesn't seem to know anything about him except she thinks he's handsome. She didn't say whether or not she met him in England or, or here? No, I really get the impression that the first time she met him was here in Landview. Uh -huh. Now, I've been trying to ask her about Wellesley Hall, too, but she keeps babbling about decorating or Garth hanging around. Wait a minute. Who the hell is Garth? He is Lord Henry's right-hand man. He flew in from London to take care of some business matters, but he's a sly one. Too many questions, you're going to see right through me. Hmm. Now, did you talk to Bruner? Uh, no, I was going to talk to him last night, but things kind of get uh, complicated. Did you talk to Bo? Uh, no, actually, he's out of town for a little while, but I've got this idea, something that may pan out for us. What is it? Well, you remember that picture we found of Bo down in Wellesley Hall? I got an idea. I want to take it over to the banner, take it into Photoshop, and see if we can develop a blow-up of it. What's it going to do for us? Well, maybe nothing, but maybe something. Maybe we can find something from it. You know, we don't have much to go on here, Rob. All we've really got is that letter of your father saying that things are not as they seem and that the answer lies at Wellesley Hall. 
Now we got the picture, so let's see what we can do with that. We got the letter knowing that uh, we're gonna, all we really have is the father's letter. So we can find out exactly what's going on. We, we got the letter knowing that uh, things are not as they seem, and the answer lies in the All right, let's go see if that photo can give us any answers to connections about Lord Henry and Paul. Great, let's go. You want to talk about problems? I got problems here. You come on over here. I'll show you some problems. What I need is a solution. Yeah, well, get back to me. Well, I hope you got some good news. Now, look at the temporary printing plant. No, three weeks. Three weeks for a no-frills operation. Can you believe it? I'll have this place operating in four. No. What? Lay it on me. What is it? Minimum of two weeks to clear out the debris. Oh, damn. Even with a double crew? All right, give me the best you got. Do the best you can, Bill. Right. All right. All right. <laughs> I thought you were out of town. Yeah, well, I took care of everything in a hurry so I could get back. What the hell are you doing here? Well, I'm, uh, I'm trying to get my newspaper running again. Yeah, but Clint, you should be careful. You know, you got a concussion from this explosion. I think uh, maybe you should be at home in bed, resting. Oh, I see. Would you be at home in bed, resting, if uh, the Buchanan building looked like this? Well, no, I, I guess not, but I heard Larry Wolick tell you, you've got to take it easy. <laughs> you know, I wish you were half as concerned about Pa's business as you are about my health. What the hell does that mean? It means you sold him down the river, that's what it means. You sold him down the river, Bo. The Orca well is going to produce millions when it comes in, and you gave it away for pennies. Pennies! After promising me that you'd take some more time to study the, the situation and get back to me, you up and sold it. Yeah, but you told me to take a look at the reports and then do what I thought was best. That's exactly what I did, Clint. You know, you pulled out of Buchanan Enterprises so you could concentrate more on the banner. So why don't you just take care of your business here and get the hell off my back? This sound is unbelievable. I'll get the hell off your back when you start running the company the way it ought to be run. Yeah, but Buchanan Enterprises is in a hell of a lot better shape than the banner is right now, thank you very much. Well, it isn't going to be, thank you very much, if you keep making your lousy deals. First, first you want to put a whole town out of work so you can put a couple million dollars in the kitty, right? Then you, you practically give away an oil operation that could make 20 times the profit, 20 times the profit that you'd have made on Olympic. Yeah, but you came in at the tail end of both those deals. You don't have a clue about either one of them. You bet I don't. You kept me in the dark. You did all the preliminary, the preliminary work in secret without bothering to tell me about either one of those deals, Bo. I had to find out about both of them by accident. Take it easy. It was no big secret. You just weren't around. I can't take the time to look for you to, for, on every little detail. Every little detail? All I had to know was you were even considering a deal. I'd have done some research. I'd have, I'd have look. What the hell's wrong with you? Why are you limping? Uh, I got up in the middle of the night to get a drink of water, and I slammed right into a chair in my <laughs> hotel room. Well, maybe you ought to have Larry look at it. No, come on. Let's not make a federal case out of this. I put ice on it. The swelling's down. I'm as good as new. By the way, what hotel was it? <laughs> and in what city? Why, 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 why were you even there? I swear, you just don't quit, do you? Well, I'm just a little curious. As... I'm a little curious as to what deal you might be cooking up now, you know, without my knowledge or pause. I don't like your, uh, your tactics. I don't like you operating in a vacuum. You know, without without informing me or Pa, without us having some say in it. It's not your business, Bo. It is not your business. You understand? It's Pa's business first, then it's yours and mine. And if you think you're going to keep ramrodding these little deals of yours through without without me or Pa having a say in it, then I got to say, I got to tell you, you got another thing coming. Clint, come on. I don't want to argue with you. I hate arguing with you. You're my brother. 
I know you're older, I know you're smarter, I know you have much more experience, but as far as Buchanan Enterprises is concerned, believe me, I know what I'm doing. Every move that I make is in Pa's best interest. I'm not going to do anything to, to betray the trust that he has in me. If you want to come back and help me full time, believe me, I would think that's great. But if you can't, please, don't be a Monday morning quarterback. What the hell has gotten into you, Bo Buchanan? What the hell has gotten into you? You see, if I pick up these credits during the summer, that means that I can take one less course during the fall semester without falling behind. And then I can spend some more time with Wade. Well, that certainly makes sense to me. So will you help me with my project? Renee, I promise that I won't use your name. It's just that you know so much more than I could find in any case study. Like, for instance, the business part. I think that would be very interesting. Honey, I'll help you however I can, but I'm just curious why you've chosen this particular topic. Uh, well, um, most of the subjects on the list were, were rather dull and boring. You know, ones where I'd go to the library research and then throw the information together and turn in the paper. There wouldn't be anything new in it. And I figured if I do a project on, on prostitution, and with your help, I could, I could find some new and fascinating information that nobody's ever heard about before. Mm, and come to some kind of understanding about your mother, perhaps. You know, Lee was a friend of mine for many, many years. I knew a lot of facts about her. I mean, I knew how she got involved in prostitution. And we had many experiences together. But the woman that you knew as your mother, the woman who spent all those years looking for you and felt so badly about all those lost years. The kind, loving woman that you trusted so much, that you had such a kinship with. That woman is the real lead. She went to a lot of trouble to hide her past from me. Darling, you have got to forget about Donald Lamar. He was a very sick man. He was angry because Lee spurned his advances, obsessive for revenge. His idea of Lee is a fantasy, the fantasy of a demented mind. But our memory of Lee was such a beautiful memory. We, we shared so many things, laughter, tears, and being silly together. Those are the things I choose to remember. And you, you had even more. You had a mother who loved you more than anything in the world, who didn't want anything but to love you and to make you happy. So, honey, why not remember those rich experiences instead of holding on to some small fragment of her past that she'd escaped from long ago? No matter how hard I try, I can't forget about her. Oh, darling. She was my best friend. It's hard. She's still part of me. Every time I pick out a dress or a piece of jewelry, I wonder if she approves. And sometimes when I hear something funny or I'm feeling low and blue, I have a little conversation with her. You know, right there in my head. Well, my conversations aren't quite the same. It's affecting my relationship with Wade. I can't... I, I understand, darling. Have you thought of seeing a counselor at school? All right, then what about the next best thing? I suggest that you put this psychological project aside just for a little while and concentrate on things that have absolutely nothing to do with Lee. Like, for instance, I think that this idea that Wade has is terrific. The idea of franchising Halo Burgers. And he told me that he wanted you to be a model. Now, that's a totally different thing. Why don't you try that for a while? Buongiorno, bella gente. You see the guy over there in the hat and the scarf? Yeah. He's one of the reasons.
think that'll just about do her. Get out of the fix there. You want to get that light for me, Rob, please? Yeah. Rinse it off a little bit. And get soup. Huh. Look at the marks on the wall. Can mm -hmm. you make it any clearer? No, no, I tell you, the original was pretty much out of focus. This is about the best I could do with it. I saw those marks in the room at Wellesley Hall, but there were dozens of them. There were only a few there. Yeah, what was that you said when we first walked in the place? You said it looked like, uh, I don't know, someplace out of the Tower of London. Remember that? Yeah, it did, like a dungeon or prison, something, something like that. Yeah. Well, you know, when a man's in prison, he tends to mark off the time just to know how long he's been there. So you got a Monday, a Tuesday. Yeah. All right, well, we've got, we've got a um, empty castle, and we've got a room in the basement that looks like a cell. Maybe Lord Henry was keeping Bo captive. Splish. Would you gentlemen care for lunch? We'll have it later, thanks, Jarvis. Should you be having about in that leg, old chap? God, just cut the old chap routine, will you? My, my, aren't we testy? It must be the pain. I think you're taking all sorts of risks walking around so soon after surgery. Well, Dr. Bruner's gonna come back. He's gonna check this out soon. Well, yeah? Damn it, Bo, you're taking all sorts of risks. You've no business being in Henry's house. Now, the doctor lives at your father, so why can't he attend to your leg there? Because if Asa walks in and sees us, I'm gonna have a hell of a time explaining it to him. Oh, from what I hear, Asa can't remember anything an hour after it's happened. Yeah, but it's that one hour that really worries me. See, I thought I'd be a lot safer over here having you cover for me. Yeah, you're probably right. That disappear. Don't come barreling up till the coast is clear. Oh, Bo, I'm aware of the pain that you've suffered. I'm sorry you have to experience more. God, what on earth are you doing? Oh, just examining the decor around the fireplace. Quite nice. I'd like some of this for a table in my London office. Next time you're in Italy, you can order some. I have the name and address in my decorating notes. Oh, thanks. That's very kind of you. Well, don't read more into it than was intended. I certainly won't. Now, where's my adoring husband? Well, last time I saw him, we were inspecting the stables together. He went out, madam. He didn't say where you could be reached. Would you get me some tea, please? Yes, ma'am. Well, obviously, you had some success. Well, the city of Landview could use a little continental flair, but yes, I managed to get what I wanted. And my darling decorator has promised me the downstairs will be completed within one week. My, my, you must have really turned on the charm, or thrown your title around quite a bit. The sooner it gets done, the sooner he'll get paid. Garth, must you stare at me that way? What way? As if your eyes were undressing me. Please stop it, it's quite irritating. Oh, you'd prefer it if my hands were undressing you. Look, if you insist and continue with this nonsense, I'll have my father dismiss you. No, you won't. If Daddy walked in here right now, I demand he fired you immediately. I know you too well. I know you better than you know yourself. Eventually, you'll stop this ridiculous charade you're playing out with the adorable Robbie. One of these days, you'll admit how much you desire me. Remove the table. It's in the middle of the set. Thank you, Charles. This chair has to go. Please, Gilbert. Thank you. Wanda, that one has your name on it. Please move it along. Thank you very much. Wait! Yeah! I'm ready now for the girls, huh? Bring on the girls. My camera. The... Oh, Charles. Gracias, gracias. Okay, girls. All set for you. Oh, wonderful. Randy. Beautiful girls. Beautiful girls. Man up from heaven. We begin with the brunette. Everyone else, watch! Learn! <laughs> gracias, gracias, wonderful people. Yes, now, a smile, innocent smile, but sexy, huh? Uh, less innocence, more sex. Oh, well, you know, we're trying to sell this to families, you know? I'm mothers, fathers, kids on skateboards. Uh, you are on desert island, huh? The wind is blowing, blowing through your hair. Your lover approaches. Good, thank you. From a deserted beach. Now, give me a big hello. Hello, doll. Yes, yes, one. Hi. Hi. Wonderful, beautiful, most beautiful woman in the world. 
see right here, we got one mark, mm -hmm. two, mm -hmm. three, four, and then there's the fifth. Yeah. One for every day of the week. That's all I see. But that doesn't mean a whole lot, because you said you saw a dozen of these when we were at Wellesley Hall, right? So Bo was held prisoner for months. <sighs> I can't believe that. I, I mean, if Lord Henry was keeping Bo captive, we don't know when this happened or, or for how long he was held. And why Bo and Lord Henry are so tight now. See, that's, that doesn't make any sense to me. Excuse me. <sighs> well, none of it makes sense the more we uncover. Wait a minute. Let's just go back to square one for a second here. What exactly do we have? We have the fact that Lord Henry has blackmailed you into marrying his daughter, right? This way you can protect Cassie. Uh -huh. Then this guy shows up in Geneva, and he hands me a letter from my dad. And the letter warns me that nothing seems the way it is, and that uh, the truth lies in Wellesley Hall. Right. So I guess that means that Lord Henry and your father were not the kind of friends that everybody thinks they are. Now, do you think your father knew... That Bo was being held captive there? I don't know. But let's say he was. I mean, what does that say about their friendship now? Look, maybe we've been all wrong about this. Maybe Bo wasn't held captive at all. Maybe we're just jumping to conclusions. We know Bo was at Wellesley Hall. So there's got to be a connection with Lord Henry. Look, we do know that Bo was in Europe for some time. I'm going to do a little investigating my own. I'll find out exactly where he lived, who he knew, and who he used to hang around with. All right, I will talk to Joanne about Wellesley Hall. Be careful, will you? Lord Henry is a dangerous and powerful man. You are the one who needs to be careful because you're living with the man's daughter. Not for long, I hope. Wonderful. Come, come to the other side, then come back. That, wait, wait, please. Who is working here? You are working. Thank you very much. Oh, Randy, thanks. great job with the models. They're beautiful. Uh, by the way, yeah. Wait, what is your secret with the chicks? They're crazy about you, but they won't give me a tumble. It was at the time when I used to knock them dead. Uh, well, I think they're probably all too young for you, Charlie. Yeah. Well, I like a more mature woman. Yeah, I know. Good, good, good. Look at that. You're cute. Okay. Thanks. I would definitely not want my husband in this line of work, surrounded all day by a bevy of hungry females. Oh, it's just a job to him, Renee. Well, I guess so, but uh, the man is human after all, but you may be right. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Wait, um, I need to talk to you for a second, please. Honey, we got the audition some more miles. We're running kind of... Uh, a minute won't hurt you, okay? What's wrong? It's about this, uh, angel burger business. Are you sure you want to continue with it? Well, of course I'm sure. I know it's going to be a hard, lot of hard work, but I've done that before, right? Besides, it's going to make us rich. And I need a chance to prove myself to you and your father. This is the ticket. Uh, if you have some free time, give me a call. Don't hold your breath. I'll do it. Do what? I will be your Miss Angel Bird. Just a woman. Are you serious? Yeah. Yes, of course we still want you. That's great. Smile. I'll get back to you later. Hey, Clint, how's it going? Oh, where the hell have you been? I've been trying to find you all damn day. I'm sorry, I was late getting back into town. I had some important business to take care of. Listen, I just talked to the foreman. He said it's going to take him two weeks before they can even start to rebuild here. Yeah. I can't blame you for being so upset. Uh, that isn't it. Uh, that isn't it. I can deal with that. That I can handle. It's what's happening on the personal front, driving me up a wall. Hey, wait a minute. Is there something wrong with Asa? No, it's not Asa. It's Bo. Now, Cord, I have done my level best to try and be fair to him. <laughs> Lord knows Vicky's able to manage that like a champion, but something, something just doesn't add up with him. Maybe your instincts have been right about him all along. Uh, Clint, what is this all about? What exactly happened? A lot of little things. <laughs> and some big things. But mostly it's about the way he's running Pa's business. And he's not being honest with anyone these days. Especially with me and Paul. As I suspected, it was in flames. But the salve I put on will heal the inflammation. And I'll prescribe some medication for the pain. What, pills? No, no, thank you, doctor. No pills for me. I'll be just fine. <laughs> 
Well, I gather by your confident mood that things went okay with your brother, Clint. <laughs> that man is a total fool, Bruner. He's never been hard to handle at all. But he's still a thorn in our sides, nonetheless. Not anymore. I gave him my uh, please don't pick on your poor little brother routine, and he uh -huh. bought it. Plus, he's up to his ears right now, and trouble's over there at the Banner. He's gonna be out of our hair for at least a couple more weeks. Well, Elizabeth and Henry will be pleased to hear that. <laughs> it's so amusing. Oh, I'm just thinking about Cord and Clint, how they keep going on and on about how... You, you know, I'm just not the same since I got back from Europe. Well, obviously, they're referring to your personality. Because physically, thanks to me, you are perfection. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the Patrick London Show. I'm Patrick London. And I'm here in Switzerland, uh, about to undergo a rather magical transformation. One that is sure to dazzle your eyes and confound your senses. But before I slip into my little white gown and I trot off to the operating room, I just thought I'd record a few brief but shining moments of my real self. For the record, as they say. You see, uh, a man's hope for immortality it generally rests with his sons. But since I don't have any sons to continue the London line, uh, I'm just going to have to settle for this high-tech version of life after life. Bruner, no matter what I look like, no matter what I sound like, I'm still Patrick London. Clint, I, I thought you said you were going to give Bo the benefit of the doubt. I was. I was. But uh, it's getting harder and harder to do uh, and not question the trust that I've had in him. I swear to you, Cord, I don't know what the hell he is up to. But I've got this, this gnawing feeling in my gut that says he's dealing from the bottom of the deck. Like with Asa? Like with all of us. Wait a minute. Are you saying that maybe Bo is trying to do something to undermine the family? I'm saying he's just acting strange. I mean, there's uh, been a lot of things that he's been doing lately that just don't make sense. I mean, it's, it's totally out of character. I never thought I'd have to... have to say this about my own brother. But ever since he took over the reins of Buchanan Enterprises, he's become ruthless. He's become cold-hearted. The only thing that, that he's interested in is making a quick buck and to hell with anybody who gets in his way and ends up getting hurt. I'm real sorry about this, Paul. I mean, it must be very disappointing to see Bo like this. It isn't just the disappointment. It's it's having to question every move he makes. It so tears me up. What are you going to do? What can I do? What options do I have? I can either keep my mouth shut and, and write him off as a casualty to big business, or I can try to find some answers to some very hard questions. You know, every time I watch this videotape, I'm amazed at the job you did on my face and body. I swear, you ought to get the Nobel Prize for turning Patrick London into an exact duplicate of that Bo Buchanan. That is high praise indeed, coming from a man who is himself a brilliant doctor and research scientist. Here, watch, no, watch this. This is one of my favorite parts. I still say this is a dangerous idea. Oh, come on. Give it a rest, Elizabeth. I told you I was going to be making this videotape as a way of checking my progress. How else do you expect me to realize this transformation unless I can see myself the way other people do? Honest, what if someone should find it once you replace the real Bo Buchanan? Don't worry, I'm going to destroy the tape once I've perfected my act. Very well. But do get on with it. Let's have your latest trick. <laughs> well, dogs do tricks, Elizabeth. But I perform miracles like this. Uncanny, isn't it? See, I spent hours perfecting that horrendous cowboy twang the Buchanans are so proud of. What do you think? I think you're a bigger fool than you ever were. Stop that tape immediately. You got a problem, lady? Yes, and I'm looking at it. You promised to destroy that tape. Yeah, well, I changed my mind. Yeah. 
Considering the idiocy of keeping that tape, I'd say you didn't have much to change. I want it destroyed now. No, fat chance. That tape is my only record of my previous existence. Now, I'm keeping that tape. How on earth did I ever think I could trust you? Please, Elizabeth, calm yourself. For heaven's sake, Henry, don't you understand? That tape is all the evidence anyone needs to ruin me and Patrick and our entire operation. Everything, everything we have worked to achieve could be destroyed instantly. If anyone got his hands on that tape, that testament to Patrick's monumental ego. No. Give me the tape. No. I'm warning you. I may look like Bob Buchanan, I may sound like him, but I'm still Patrick London. I know how to get what I want. Now you give me that tape! Renee, thanks for meeting me on the fly like this. Now, I only have a minute to talk, but I wanted to bring you up to date before I headed over to Atlantic City. Good news? I hope so. John and I talked to Sherry, the casino cocktail waitress we told you about the other day. The gambler's girlfriend. Ex-girlfriend, anyway. She called to tell me that he suddenly reappeared. Now, she gave me a description of him and what blackjack table he usually hangs out at. So I'm going to go down there and see if I can get the truth out of him. This is the best news I've had in a long time. Well, I can't make you any promises, but hopefully we can get this guy to admit that he was paid to make that phone call and lie about you owing him money. That way we can go to Asa, we can prove this whole thing was a setup, and we can prove to him that, that you two were supposed to be together. And if I haven't been wrong all along, the trail from this guy will lead directly to our Mr. Beau Buchanan. No question about it, he's behind all this. Well, I think we better wait till we get all the facts. In the meantime, I've got to run. But here's the name and number of the casino that I'm going to be at. All right. Thank you so much, darling. I know you're really putting it on the line, helping me go up against Bo like this, and I deeply appreciate it. Renee, hopefully we're on the right track. Renee, hello. Oh, Vicky, what a pleasant surprise. I hate to bother you. I know you're going to be leaving, but I wonder if I could talk to you just for a moment. Please. Oh, yes, please, please. Forgive me, I don't mean to pry. If you don't want to talk about it, I'll understand. I am having a heck of a time trying to figure out what is going on between you and Asa. I was so surprised to see you at his house yesterday. I know. Oh, Lordy, Vicky. I can't begin to understand it myself. I, I mean, one minute he wants me to leave town because he thinks I'm drugging him in order to take all of his money. And the next minute he's thrilled to see me as if nothing had happened. All I can figure is that there's something wrong with his mind that makes him forget from one minute to the next, or maybe he feels badly about the way he treated me. Well, you can hardly blame him for the way he treated you because of what he thought you had done to him. No, of course not. But the point is, I didn't drug him. Vicky, please believe me when I tell you that I love this man like I've never loved any man in my entire life. I wasn't looking to marry him for his money, but because I wanted to spend the rest of my life with him. Because he's sweet and warm, with a heart that's bigger than the, all the heavens put together. Now tell me, why would I want to harm a man who I love that much? So, Clint, um, exactly what are these hard questions that you're going to put to Bo? I want to know why he sold those oil wells to the XYZ company. There was absolutely no reason why, uh, why the Orca had to be uh, unloaded. And even if there were, I'm sure he could have gotten a better price for it. <laughs> but it's like he was just out to dump it to pick up a fast buck. And I happen to know that Buchanan Enterprises isn't in such bad shape that they got to sell a profitable operation to try and meet his payroll. You know, I, I don't think I've ever heard of this XYZ company. Who the hell has? I haven't. Where'd they come from? And how did Bo find out about them? How did he come across them? If I could just get a handle on what he's up to and why. You know, Clint, I, I don't think you're going to get any answers out of Bo. I mean, every time that man gets caught with his hand in the cookie jar, it's like he's got this quick smile and a very logical explanation. Well, maybe it's time I slam the lid on that cookie jar, especially after this last little rumor I just heard. Whoa, what rumor? A friend of mine called me this morning, a newspaper editor. Mm -hmm. 
claims that he heard through the grapevine where uh, Asa wants to sell off one of his major southwestern city newspapers. Which one? Well, I don't know that yet. I think he's having lunch with him now. Maybe she can come up with some more info. You know, I really don't think it's going to be that easy for her to pin down the origin of this rumor, Clint. Well, I, uh, I don't suppose it will. But if we find out that it is true, I'll bet you dollars to donuts, Bo is behind it. Uh, I don't like this feeling of suspicion that I have about my own brother. But just because he is running Buchanan Enterprises doesn't mean that he's got the right to run it into the damn ground. Well, amen to that. Well, not going to do me any good to get any more riled up than I already am, is it? Only way to get to the bottom of this is to call Bo, try and get him up here, and ask him to answer some questions. You keep me posted on this, then, huh? I'll do that. But can't you people speed things up? My big wedding party is in two days, not two years. Look, lady, you want it fast or you want it right? Both. If I were you, I wouldn't bother cluttering up the walls with priceless painting. And why is that? Because they'd only serve to detract from your own priceless beauty. Go on, Garth. I don't have time for such foolishness. You are engaged in a very ridiculous bit of foolishness yourself. You mean redecorating this old mansion? Being married to Robert. I've told you, Garth, I love him. Now, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Robert, darling, I was just saying to Garth that I want everything to be just so for our big wedding party. Isn't that right, Garth? Right. I'll go and see if Jarvis needs any help. Are you as excited as I am? I don't know. You seem pretty excited. <laughs> yes, I am. I can't wait to be introduced to Land Views Creme de la Creme. They don't know it yet, but I'm going to put this town on the map. Funny, last time I looked, Landview was on the map. <laughs> Not for the aristocracy. Hello? Uh, yeah, hold on. It's for me. Business. Why don't you keep an eye on the painters? All right. I suppose somebody has to. Don't be too long. Yeah, I'm back. What did you find out? Uh, look, I'd rather not talk about this on the phone. Uh, do you think we can get together? Good news? Yeah, I came up with some very interesting information, something I think we should move on. All right, um, I'll meet you at Holden Towers in, uh, say, two hours. You got it. See you then. Bye. Hey, Sarah, hi. What are you doing here? I was hoping to catch you in a professional surrounding. Ooh, sounds like you mean business. Yes, I do. I was just at the hospital, and uh, let me tell you, the Center for the Blind is really coming along. Oh. I was hoping that I could convince you to take some photographs at the center for the newspaper. I talked to Clint, and he said that the banner should be up and running soon, and uh, I'd really like people to see what we're doing at the center. Well, of course, I'd love to. So you do it? Yeah, yeah, I I'm gonna have to take a rain check for like a couple days from now because I'm real busy. <laughs> Is this a brush off? No, no, I I'm sorry, but uh, I, I kind of did tell you that, that, well, everything's gonna have to be on hold while I take care of what I need to take care of, and. That includes the more enjoyable things. I know. And um, I want you to know I figured out why. But don't worry. Your secret is completely safe with me. Hey, bitch. Hi, I'm Pauline. So? So, I'm a friend of Sherry's. What's that to me? Nothing. It's just that she told me you're hard up for cash right now for some lady in Landview, Renee something or other, Welsh on some issue. Double down. I don't know how Sherry found out about that, but she's got a big mouth. Look, Sherry was only trying to help, even though you did walk out on me. She threw me out. Yeah, 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 whatever. Look, the point is, I need some information. You tell me what I want to know, and I'll make it worth your while. By giving you whatever you want. Oh, wow, that's the third natural in a row. I need more chips. I'll wait for you. Suit yourself. Thanks, you Keep losing like that, 
And I'm sure we'll both get what we want out of this little chance meeting. For heaven's sake, Elizabeth, let him have the bloody tape! I'm sure he'll be very careful and won't leave it lying around. Had I known you would act so irresponsibly, Patrick, I would never have allowed you to become Bo Buchanan. I was your last hope, and you know that. You were sick. You kidnapped my granddaughter because you were obsessed with her. I loved Kate, and she loved me. She was in love with Cord. I was the man she was supposed to marry. And she would have married me, too, if you hadn't left me in that, that stinking jungle prison to rot. Yeah. At least I made it up to you by keeping you from serving another prison term after you lost your mind and kidnapped my granddaughter. Uh, fortunately, the judge was a friend of the family. Otherwise, no one else would agree to my sending you off for psychiatric treatment. What do you want me to do, huh? Get down on the ground and kiss your feet? No. I want you to grow up and act your age. Keeping that tape was a childish whim that could cost us everything we've worked for. All right, you two. There's the bell. Back to your corners. Hello. Could you please hold on for a moment? Who knows you're here? Why? Because this call is for you. Give me that. Okay, you get home from school. You want brownies. What are you gonna do? You're watching cartoons. You want brownies. What are you gonna do? Here's what you do. No, ready to microwave fudge brownies. From Pillsbury. Out of the fridge. What the hell are you doing calling me here? I thought you'd want to know that there's this chick down here asking questions about the money this Renee brought supposed to owe me. Who is she? I don't know. It says she's a friend of my ex. Have you ever seen her before? Nope. Well, it's obvious then that somebody put her on to you. That's what I figure. What do you want me to do about it? Play along with her. What should I tell her? You tell her nothing. See if you can find out uh, who sent her down there. This wasn't part of the original deal, you know? I know. And you're going to get paid for any information that you get from me. But let me tell you something. Don't you ever call me here again. From now on, I'll contact you. Whatever you say, you're the dealer. And don't you forget that. What's that all about? More trouble? No. No, it's my man down in Atlantic City. He says that uh, someone's down there snooping around asking questions about the calls that he made for me. It's got to be Renee Devine behind this. I thought you said we didn't have to worry about that ex, madam. We don't. She's just wasting her time, that's all. What if your man decides to talk? He won't do that, because I know he's got gambling fever. I've got the cure. As long as I keep him in money, he's going to keep his mouth shut. Natives seem to be restless. What are they doing? Whispering some nonsense or other. Should we turn the volume up? No need. Let them think they're getting away with it. Keeps their spirits up. What if they're planning an escape? <laughs> Never fear, Elizabeth. Those three will remain our guests for as long as we have a need for them. They're listening, but the volume's not turned all the way up. I don't know how much more of this I can take. I've lost all track of time. I don't know if it's day or night or even what day of the week it is. Delilah, we're going to make it. We have to for the sake of our families. What is it? I've got an idea. We've got to get a message to the outside world that there's an imposter. Now, if we do this right, I think we just might be able to pull it off. I don't like leaving Ace alone this long. I'd better get back to the mansion. Yeah, I'm gonna go with you. I've got a few people I have to check on, too. Vicky's one of them. She's been in my corner ever since I walked into Happy Horse Ranch. I want to make sure she hasn't changed her mind. I hope Tina is on your list of people to see. It's vital that you keep her happy, and thereby keep her from suspecting you. <laughs> I, I wonder how surprised Tina would be if she found out that the man that she's fallen in love with is the same man that used her as a guinea pig for his burn formula. You are never to speak of that in front of her. Elizabeth, contrary to popular belief, I'm not stupid. 
I just look like Bo Buchanan. Come on. Did you see that? What? Patrick took that tape after I expressly warned him about the dangers of not destroying it. Relax, Elizabeth. I'm sure he'll be very careful. I think we'd all better be careful, Henry. That man is like a, a loose cannon. Then we must make sure not to light any matches near his fuse. Shouldn't those curtains be open? No need for that. My dear Henry, we went to a great deal of trouble to bring our prisoners here, and I'm determined to find out what they're up to. 